Welcome to the technological companion for independent events, the law of total probability and Markov chains. In this technological companion, we'll continue working with our example on vegetation dynamics in desert plant communities by building a MATLAB model that implements a simple Markov chain using made up initial data and a made up transition matrix. The purpose of this MATLAB live script is to take some first steps towards building a Markov model, implementing it in code, and extracting some predictions from it. In this particular example, we'll arbitrarily make up a vector that represents the initial state of the desert plant community we're modeling. Then we'll iterate that state forward in time by successively applying a made-up Markov transition matrix to it through left multiplication. Then we'll see what kinds of behavior we can expect of our system that we're modeling over time. More concretely, imagine observing the initial probabilities of finding a system in one of three states. For example, we might seek to model the succession dynamics for a desert plant community in which a patch of land might be dominated by shrub-like plants, grasses, or bare land, represented by the random variable x sub t, taking on values 1, 2, or 3, respectively. If we divided a study site into a grid and observed that 69% of the patches in the grid were initially dominated by shrubs, 13% of the patches were initially dominated by grasses, and 18% were initially covered with bare land, then we might summarize that data with the following state vector p equals 0 0.69, 0 0.13, and 0 0.18, arranged as a column vector. Now we define a transition matrix for a Markov model that describes succession dynamics for each patch of land. Let p of x sub t equal 1, p of x sub t equal 2, and p of x sub t equal 3 represent the probabilities that the patch of land is dominated by each of the three states at time t. Increment time forward from t by a discrete step to t plus 1. Predict p of x sub t plus 1 equals 1, p of x sub t plus 1 equals 2, and p of x sub t plus 1 equal 3, or the probabilities that the patch of land will be dominated by each of the three states at time t plus 1, given knowledge of the same probabilities at time t. We'll do so by invoking the law of total probability written here. Now the law of total probability in this context may be rewritten as a matrix vector equation and that's a slightly more convenient form for us to work with because the matrix in this equation turns out to be our transition matrix. Its columns are probabilities that must sum to 1. Each entry in the matrix represents the probability that the system will make a transition from the state corresponding to the column the entry is in at time t to the state that corresponds to the row the entry is in at the future time t plus 1. For instance, valid values for the transition probabilities stored in a matrix M might look something like this where the first column takes on values of 0 0.7, 0 0.14, and 0 0.16. The second column takes on values of 0 0.25, 0 0.63, and 0 0.12. And the third column takes on the values of 0 0.11, 0 0.04, and 0 0.85. Notice how those values are all probabilities. They're values that, take, that range somewhere between 0 and 1 and the columns in this matrix do in fact sum to 1. So if we run this section, we'll enter that transition matrix into memory. With the initial state vector and the transition matrix in place, it's possible to iterate the model in order to see how we expect the distribution of dominant vegetation to behave over time at the study site. And we do this simply by multiplying the transition matrix onto the left of our initial state vector, taking that result, appending it into a new column to the right of that state vector, and then repeating the process over and over again, getting a new update every, t every time we do the operation. And we, we do this inside of a loop. Once we've accomplished that, we'll see that we have a sequence of state vectors. We could sure look at them numerically, 
but it's going to be more instructive to us if we visualize them over time. And so we'll simply plot them relative to each other on the same set of axes and label the meaning of each trace on, on, on the graph. And when we do that, we obtain an image that looks something like this. So the blue graph represents the percentage of the landscape that's dominated by shrub-like species. The red graph, this one here, represents the percentage of the landscape that's dominated by grasses. And the yellow graph represents the percentage of the landscape that's dominated by bare ground. And we can see that all three of these graphs seems to be reaching a horizontal asymptote. And it appears that this was just under 50%, 0.49. This was 0.32, almost 0.33. And this seems to be leveling off to just under 18%. And that's the prediction that we can extract from our model. It tells us that if we allow our desert plant community to reach equilibrium, we should expect that about 18% of the landscape is going to be dominated with grasses. About 33% is going to be dominated by shrubs, and the remaining 49% will be dominated by bare land. That brings us to the end of this technological companion for building a Markov model and extracting some predictions from it. I hope you found it useful. As always, in the description you will find a link to the GitHub repository containing copies of the MATLAB script and live script I used in this video. Please feel free to download it and modify it to suit your own purposes. I hope it will enable you to learn more about building Markov models.